right guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles, welcome to another causal inference struggle. Today I want to talk about stratified randomization, specifically why you might see stratified randomization in papers and why it makes sense to do stratified randomization. It's something that you may or may not do on your own, but it's definitely something that you might see in other papers, so I want to talk about it. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around, but let's go ahead and get right into it. Remember that when we do randomization, what we're doing is we're picking names out of a hat to choose whether or not they get treatment. We're using that randomization so that when we estimate the impact of the treatment on the outcome, we have balance between the treatment group and the control group on unobservables and observables because it's as good as random whether or not you got treated or not, so that we can interpret this blue arrow here causally. Now, what if you want to do this randomization not just overall by names? What if you're still worried that the treatment group could still have some characteristics that are slightly different than the control group? So for example, let's say you're trying to estimate whether or not a certain hospital has good or bad health outcomes. And so option one is you just take 50% of patients, you send them to one hospital, and you send the other 50% of patients to a different hospital where the quantity is known. And again, you're trying to find out whether or not this new hospital is better or worse than the existing hospital. Well, you might still worry that just by chance a bunch of old people or a bunch of unhealthy people could be sent to one hospital over the other, and that would bias your results because maybe you think that both age and existing health status are very important in determining your outcome, and so you want to make sure that there's balance on those dimensions across your treatment group and your control group. Well, what you could do is you could group patients by their age and their health status, and here we'll just say age is young or old, health status is healthy or unhealthy, just to make it a little easier. So before you draw names out of the hat, you take everyone's name and you put them into different buckets to draw out of. So rather than drawing out of one hat, you're now drawing out of four hats. You've got the old healthy hat, the old unhealthy hat, the young healthy hat, and the young unhealthy hat. And so you just draw fewer names out of each hat. But after you've drawn all the names, you have the same number of people in each group as you would have if you drew names out of one hat but now you have done more to ensure that the old healthy is sort of split between the new hospital and the old hospital, same for old and healthy, young healthy, and young and healthy. So now you've sort of guaranteed that the treatment and the control group are going to be comparable amongst both age and health status, which you think are super important in determining your outcome. So now you have prevented the case where maybe just by chance a bunch of old unhealthy people end up at the new hospital, and so you're gonna underestimate how effective that new hospital is, when you do the stratification, you're again protecting yourself. Just to wrap up with some benefits, we've talked about how you can ensure balance for important covariates by doing the stratification by picking names out of subhats rather than all out of one single hat with everyone in it, which means you'll have more confidence in the treatment effect that you get from this estimate because you have done as much as you can to prevent selection bias by doing the stratification. And it's also useful because you can measure heterogeneous treatment effects. Say you can do a sub-analysis where you only look at the old and healthy people and see how the new hospital work compared to the old hospital, and you already have those subgroups defined. So hopefully this just gives you a better idea of stratified randomization so that when you're reading those papers or thinking about how you design a random control trial of your own, this is something you can keep in mind if you think it's useful or not. But if this video was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.